Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the IKMW family. It is my pleasure to introduce to you, in honor of National Women's Month, IKMW's March Spotlight, our very own Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter. Assemblywoman Sumter represents the 35th Legislative District and serves as the Majority Conference Leader and member of the 217th New Jersey General Assembly, and she is committed to serving the citizens of the great state of New Jersey. So please give it up for Assemblywoman Sumter. Woo! <laughs> Again, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Why don't you tell me and my viewers a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. I am Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, and I represent the 35th district in New Jersey. That includes Passaic and Bergen counties. I represent over 220,000 people in the state of New Jersey. We make the laws for the state. We manage a $39 billion budget with the B. I'm one of 80 members in the state of New Jersey that's a state representative. I'm the second African-American woman in a 219 year history to represent this district. Now, before we get started, I, I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time out of your day today to be ICAMW's March Spotlight. So thank you very much, thank you. My pleasure, and my pleasure, thank you. Let's jump into some questions for today. I'm oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> so our very first question, what made you decide to choose a career in politics? So a big part of what made me decide to choose a career in politics was understanding that policy impacted everything that we touch. And I always like to say politics starts at birth. And when you have a child who asks one parent for something that one parent says no, and then they go over to the other parent and say, hey, can I do this or can I have that? That's politics. I've always enjoyed being an advocate for people. I served in student government in middle school where we represented issues like longer recess time, uh, more time at uh, lunch, better lunches. Uh, also making sure there were not too many tests on the same day uh, that were major tests that forced you to study for more than two hours in the evening. Uh, so you really had a chance to for educational excellence. Uh, so lending my voice to the voiceless has always been something I'm very passionate about. Uh, when I went to undergrad, I majored in political science and then learned, I actually interned for the very seat I hold uh, in the 35th district. And it really gave me an inside view to how the legislature worked and the impact we could have on everyday lives for people and for the betterment. That's great. That's amazing. I didn't know that. That's yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> now, the second question, with regards to the community health crisis, I believe you've mentioned before, um, before the COVID-19 pandemic began, people of color faced enormous disparities in our healthcare system. And now communities of color are being impacted by COVID-19 at an alarming rate. Do the solutions with regard to the racial disparities in the COVID-19 pandemic lie in policy? The solutions definitely lie in policy and resources for healthcare equity. Um, as you shared, Jordan, I'm glad you're following up on this, this issue. Uh, part of my passion is healthcare and making sure that every person has access to care. Uh, in the legislature, even with President Barack Obama, implementing Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, because that's one of the most expensive purchases for low wage earners and people of color. Um, having a head start for diseases that are curable uh, because we get early treatment and early interventions. In New Jersey, another big priority for us is the mortality rate for maternal health for black moms who die at an alarming rate. We're number 47 in the country uh, for a black woman dying at seven times the rate of a white woman while giving birth. So there are some systemic and structural biases built into the system, meaning our voices as black women need to be heard when we say something's wrong with our body. We need to be listened to by practitioners. So we've been doing a lot of work. I've been doing a lot of work around that. Uh, the governor's wife, Governor Murphy, First Lady Tammy Murphy, uh, has a program called Nurture New Jersey, which is a spinoff of all that we learned from 2018 to 2019 of the impact. When the pandemic hit last year, year to date, just about, we're almost a year at this, last March 2020, 
African Americans and Hispanic Americans were dying at alarming rates. And we didn't know the why, but we subsequently learned that, you know, working in support services, living in multifamily dwellings, not being able to stay home and stay safe, uh, not having protective equipment uh, while at work or while commuting on um, public transportation to work all had an impact environmentally on our health and our ability to thrive and beat COVID-19. Uh, now we're fighting for uh, more testing sites within our community. And in the state of New Jersey, Jordan, uh, we learned that 4% of African Americans have been vaccinated, 7% of Latino Americans in New Jersey or Latinas have been vaccinated. We need to get those numbers in a double digit space uh, so that we can protect ourselves and should we happen to catch COVID-19 or the coronavirus, be able to survive and not have long lasting ailments. So it's a constant fight, a uh, constant top mind presence of us elevating uh, the concerns, let alone the social isolation that folks are feeling, students such as yourself doing a lot of things virtually and learning how to elevate your voice with, with this medium uh, during a pandemic has been wonderful to see the innovation. Yes, oh, that's great. I didn't, because I actually, I wanted to add this question because I really wanted to know um, the information on it because I know that I like to keep track of things going on in the world right now. And I want to make sure that, you know, Great. No, absolutely. It's important. And your voice is important to elevate that. So, you know, so your peer group know what's happening other than just a tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, IKMW, my organization has four areas that I focus on leading with compassion, serving with a purpose, being faith driven and never compromising one's integrity, one's integrity. Now, the first the first area of focus, um, leading with compassion. What does leadership mean to you? Do you feel compassion is an important attribute in leadership? Why or why not? So compassion is a critical attribute in leadership uh, because you need to understand not only the technical and analytical aspects of policy, but what's the impact? Is it going to change someone's life for the better or is it going to cause harm for them going forward in the future? So we really need to have compassion in every step that we take. And it's Bible based. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, the second area of focus, serving with a purpose, does serving others result in a stronger sense of purpose and meaning in life? Why or why not? So serving others uh, fulfills a purpose for me. As I mentioned, I've always wanted to advocate for people in need. Uh, so it's important that we raise the issues when they can't speak for themselves, that we are that voice uh, to elevate it in spaces where change can happen. Yes, <laughs> short and to the point. Yes. yes. <laughs> now, my third area of focus, which is being faith-driven. Are you fear-driven or are you faith-driven, do you think? Why or why not? So I'm faith driven, a servant and leader, uh, always recognizing that to whom much is given, much is required. So uh, when we allow our seeds to grow and we're obedient in that faith space to our gifts and we share them, they tend to grow and blossom and you bring more people along for advancement uh, than just leaving the door closed behind you. And that's important to me that we lift up as we climb. Yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Now, my fourth and final area of focus, which is integrity. What is integrity to you and why is it so important? Integrity is your word. Uh, so you might be a little young for this, but your word is your bond, right? It, what you say you're going to do, you do. If you can't do it, you explain why. Uh, and making sure that you do everything from a place of compassion and that you're doing it with excellence. And that's part of integrity for me, which really is the foundation of my uh, Christian spirituality uh, in that space, making sure I'm representing uh, in a spirit of excellence as an example in a living truth uh, to the word of God. Yes, great. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, now, before we end, Something I like to do for my IKMW channel is a final thought. Now, do you have some last words of encouragement to our viewing audience during this tough time? So some words of encouragement. You see the flowers behind me. It's important that you do little things to make you feel special. 
And especially this month, which is Women's uh, International Women's History Month, uh, today's Women's International Day, uh, take time to tell a woman how fabulous she is and how amazing she is. Uh, also elevate yourself with self affirmations and take time to rest. Give yourself some space. And, and I always like to say, have a dance break, All right? Put some music on, have some fun laugh, love, smile, because uh, we're getting through this together and we're getting better uh, connected uh, through this pandemic. Yes, thank you. Yes, everyone should take the time to appreciate the little things in life that help, especially during this tough time during the pandemic. So. Absolutely. Yes, thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you so, so much for having me. sharing your time today. I appreciate you sharing your story and and your business and what you do has been a pleasure thank you so much i appreciate it and always remember that you are enough and know your worth as i always say beautiful thank you thank you have a great day